For this myth to be true, not only do we have to hit a small target at some distance, I mean, we know that we'll be able to do that sooner or later. Uh, the question is, what will happen to that bullet when it hits the scope? Is it actually going to penetrate all the way through and hit the, uh, the other sniper in the eye, or is, it, is the scope going to serve as some sort of a shield? Jamie's worried about the half dozen or so glass lenses inside the scope. They're not especially robust, but any one of them could still deflect a speeding bullet and stop it from bursting out the other end. Once again, Alan needs to sight in the rifle by taking test shots at a target. Well, here's the center of the group, right? Mm -hmm. so we're going to move it one click left and one click down, and that's it. Once we know that it's reasonably centered in that fashion, you guys can start shooting. Now's the chance for Adam and Jamie to get their fingers on the trigger. Good job, young man. Yeah, good shooting there, Tex. <laughs> <laughs> Those three cracking shots won't just help sight the gun, they could also determine who gets to play sniper. If Jamie's aim is just a little off, Adam's our starting shooter. There's a myth that I'm looking to bust today, which is that somehow Jamie is an incredible shot and I'm a terrible shot. Uh, it's not that I feel competitive, just, you know, I happen to be a myth buster. Bullseye, right down the middle. Perfect shot. Jamie's grouping is close to perfect. But then Adam's effort wasn't exactly scattershot. There can only be one fair decision. They both get to shoot Grant. I think it's time to set up our sniper target. I think it's time to set up our sniper target as well. This might be a good time for Grant's mom to turn off the TV. Our floppy facsimile is carefully positioned behind his rifle out at the 100-yard mark. Heads. Tails. Jamie goes first. Jamie wins the coin toss and the right to shoot first. I don't know whether I'm going to hit the guy behind the scope or not, but uh, I'm going to pretend it's either him or me. We want to hit smack dab in the middle because we want that bullet to go all the way through the scope and into our sniper. Confidence is high that this myth could be proved with a one-hit wonder, and there's no doubt that Jamie's got his eye in. That was the money shot. It's a direct hit from a distance of 100 yards. The scope is history, but gunman Grant lives to snipe another day. It didn't make it through to his eye. It didn't even make it to the back of the scope. I dare say this guy would be kind of upset, <laughs> but his eye is still intact, and, and the scope acted effectively as a shield. It looks like Jamie's fears were well-founded. The optic elements jammed the bullet. But with three more scopes to destroy, they can still turn this myth around. <laughs> well, it's up to Adam to see whether he can best this shot. And uh, that's going to be a pretty tall task. The fate of the squad rests with Sergeant Savage. I'm happy with that shot. Let's see how it is. It's another clean hit, unleashing a river of pulverized glass but it's Adam who's truly shattered. Doesn't look like I made it. No, oh, similar deal. No, it doesn't even look like it made it as far. Look, we have two hits, neither of them are kill shots, but there's no reason to call this one busted yet. Uh, Jamie or I have been firing sniper rifles for all of four hours. I think it might be time to bring in our ringer and ask Sergeant Normandy to take the shot for us. They're hoping for one expert shot that hits and shatters those lenses dead level, dead center with no deflection. So a new scope is fitted and the master marksman takes aim. I don't think I got it. In fact, he did get it. But once again, the bullet stopped short of ruining Grant's good looks. No, didn't make it through the back. It's the same deal as before. 
Yeah, I don't see a hole all the way through. I see everything collapsed inside. Yeah, look, I think this just, I mean, to me, this just keeps on explaining that it's not about marksmanship, it's about a ridiculously lucky shot. It's not plus or minus. It's like threading a needle. A half inch, yeah, it's like threading a needle from 300 feet away. There's only one scope left, so they decide to stack the odds and make this last test up close and lethal. What we're doing now is we're setting up a point blank shot so that there's no kind of trajectory involved. We've determined that the, um, the power of the bullet, uh, the difference from the distance is negligible. So if this doesn't do it, then we'll be able to say something definitive about whether the myth is possible or not. It's literally their last shot at this myth, and Alan has the honors. One, two, three. The impact is strong enough to knock the scope from the rifle. It's a fitting end to a myth that's been all but blown away. Oh, man. Looks like the same as the others from 100 yards. It's deflecting off the convex lens. Exactly the same deal. <sighs> I got to say, I thought this one was totally plausible, but uh, I'm How far not to get so down? sure. Knocked out everything in the center. I just don't think it's possible for a bullet to make it all the way through this scope. This isn't a one inch diameter tube. With the aiming reticule and the glass elements in there, it's like a half inch diameter tube. It's harder than shooting down the barrel of another gun because there's a whole bunch of crap in the way. But Jamie can still see the point of aiming straight down the scope. If you're a sniper and you're looking down the barrel of another sniper's gun and you see this glint, I'd take the shot. First off, you're gonna ruin the guy's scope and he's not gonna be able to shoot back very accurately. Uh, secondly, you're probably gonna make him clear out of there. He's not gonna be a very happy camper. And then thirdly, I mean, if you miss, you're gonna hit his head. It's a one in a billion shot. He might have been the best marksman in the world and might have never made that shot. If the sun and moon and stars aligned and maybe one of the lenses was weak and maybe the sniper had removed an element because he had some better focusing thing, maybe then the bullet could have gone through. We don't have the scope that Gunny Hathcock shot at, so we can't know for sure. I say we have to call this myth busted.